Hi everyone, let's talk about all the business ventures Acacia Kersey went on over the years. There's been so many of them and Acacia somehow managed to avoid all accountability, repeats the same behaviors over and over, and she's still selling to her most devoted fans. Thank you to Opinion Twitter for keeping receipts about all this, without you this video wouldn't exist. I was going to make it into one video originally, but for my own sanity I'm going to split it into two parts. This part will be covering everything up to and including Acacia's Twitch phase, so let's get into it. The first and in my opinion funniest venture was when Acacia was trying to resell her old clothes to her fans by getting her mom to sell them on a website called Acacia's Closet. This was a pretty long time ago, probably around 2014, but it's the first incident that's going to be a base for a pattern of behavior that will continue long into the future. Among the clothes were these used vans that were being sold for $75. I personally don't think a dirty old pair of shoes is worth that much, but it's touched Acacia Brilli's foot, so it must be special. I don't think I need to explain this more than Acacia using her status to upcharge for used dirty items. There is a person selling a pair of these, imitating and claiming they're Acacia's, so watch out for fakes. Next, Acacia went on to sell clothes on Poshmark, most of which she never shipped. There are less receipts for this, but the next incident is just a repetition of this situation. The next clothing selling venture was on Depop, where Acacia listed and sold many of her old clothes. This can seem like a good idea, except the prices were marked higher than the original market value, and just like with Poshmark, Acacia never shipped some of the items. An opinion Twitter user said, For people who might not think this is a big deal, my roommate pays rent and helps pay a college tuition, all with earning a minimum wage salary. So yes, spending 40 something dollars on a dress to not receive it is a big deal. And tagged Acacia. Acacia quote tweeted and said, Hi, I went to send in my items today. In fact, I bought all the packaging details and sat in front of my printer, but Depop suspended my account and won't allow me to get the addresses. So I emailed support this morning and I'm waiting to hear back, but so far they haven't lifted it. When someone pointed out to Acacia, that when an order is made, the seller receives an email with information about the transaction, including the address of the buyer, and she could check that. Acacia blocked them. Another said attempt to run from responsibility. The person who made the original comment replied back and said, Honestly, it makes sense that this is a scam. When companies scam people, they do so by never sending the order, but having PayPal or a bank refund their customers. That way the company can still keep the money. And they're right, this is a common way for people to make quick money. Set up an online shop, collect the money, and wait for the account to be suspended. Not saying this was Acacia's intention, but it doesn't matter because the outcome was just as bad. Other comments to Acacia say, My roommate was on the phone with her bank for half an hour to be reassured that her credit card info will not be stolen. Now she has to contact PayPal to actually get her money back. At Acacia Kersey, hope this was all worth it. And it bothers me because the people who order from her have jobs and earn their money. They worked hard to treat themselves only to be scammed by a lazy 20 year old. Update, my roommate came home, I explained everything and showed her receipts. She's visibly upset and has been on the phone with her bank for approximately 15 minutes. Remember guys, money is a serious thing. I don't want Acacia to refund our money herself. I'm almost certain there will be no issue with PayPal to get our money back. But she cannot ignore this. This is so unbelievably shitty. Just apologize and don't ignore us, at Acacia Brinley. Acacia used her followers to make a quick buck multiple times. Disgusting. This is people's actual hard-earned money. Not everyone has the privilege of posting a sponsored picture to make money. Explain why this happened and apologize, at Acacia Brinley. I know Acacia never had a real job or had to worry about money, but as someone who has had a job since I was 15 just to help my family make ends meet, what she did is incredibly shitty. She needs to address it. I completely agree with these comments. Acacia never had a job in the real world and has no concept of what real hard work is. Her career consisted of posting selfies and pictures of her kids and an occasional video when she needs money because Acacia said everyone does their job when they want money. Not realizing most people want financial stability and not temporary monetary rewards. Screenshots like the ones I'm sharing only exist thanks to Opinion Twitter. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Opinion Twitter is a community on Twitter that was created when fans of Acacia pushed away 
and critics came together to hold Acacia accountable because she clearly wasn't going to do it herself. Before videos about Acacia were created in 2020, after her racist past came back to the forefront during the Black Lives Matter protests, the Opinion Twitter community were the main people to talk about Acacia's behavior and activity online, which she tried her hardest to hide. Another fan was warning people on Twitter that they bought from Acacia's Depop page and never received their items. They said, I need some help. I need at Acacia Brilli to check her Depop. This is easier than going through PayPal for a refund or whatever. Plus, she sold another item on there since, and I'm hoping this person isn't having the same issue that I am. And there were many others complaining about this at the time. Depop has a policy where a seller has to ship the items they sold within a certain time frame, and because Acacia exceeded that time and didn't ship the items she sold, her account was suspended. She never had to refund anyone, but because when a person sells an item online and never ships it is considered fraud, most banks are equipped to deal with it. So I hope everyone who bought clothes from her got their money back. Next was her merch. Acacia and Jairus made plenty of merch over the years, including Why Not Me merch, based around their daughter's medical misdiagnosis. They promised to donate a portion of the proceeds to charity, but there was never a mention of this again after their daughter received a different diagnosis. This could have been a good idea, and I get wanting to make money to support a baby who's going to require a lot of care, but Acacia never stated where the money was going, and even if it all went to her kid's care, her not saying anything about the money after promising to donate is sketchy. After making some money, Acacia was planning to make more merch and put out an Instagram story ad announcing she's looking for an artist to help her create original merch. She said, Graphic designers slash artists needed. I'm putting together an art search for my next merch. There will be three designs chosen and each artist chosen will be compensated. After last night, trying to create my own, I realized my expertise is in more simplistic designs, but I want to have some more fun. I know someone else could do a hell of a lot better than I can. Honestly, just have as much fun as possible. Get groovy with it. I love anything 70s. Love the vintage band T vibe. Love the wavy lines. Love the flowers. Love the orange muted colors, but also love the bright neons. I'm super open. Just create what you're drawn to. Email your concepts to my email and I will be choosing the designs over the next month, so no rush. Aw, oh, thanks Acacia, so generous to give a month heads up on a project that an artist might not even be paid for. She clearly doesn't understand how artist searches work or what a portfolio is and that telling artists to get groovy with it and create what they're drawn to is not going to cut it. Usually when someone is searching for artists, they will do the research themselves to find someone whose art they enjoy and think they can create art for the concept they need. If an artist is asked to send in work, they're asked to send in a portfolio, which is a collection of art they've already created and can show off their skills. Asking an artist to spend their time coming up with and creating an art piece that they might not even get paid for is insulting and disrespectful. Pay attention here because this was an opportunity for Acacia to step back and think about what she's doing and how she treats others, especially people who are her fans and genuinely support her. Next was the fur coat situation. Around the time of Acacia and Jairus' wedding in 2017, and during her vegan phase, Acacia got a comment on her Instagram, accusing her of receiving seven fur coats from a small coat business and never paying for them. The comment said, bought seven bespoke fur coats from my wife's company, and has kept the coats and refused all requests for payment. Disgusting way to treat people. A Twitter user asked Acacia about this, and she commented on what was happening and said, I didn't want to post about this publicly, because this whole situation is crazy, but they sent me coats for my wedding for Instagram promotion, and then billed me 3700 after I received them, and now they're trying to make a lawsuit, and I'm like, I'll just send them back? It's crazy. For real, I didn't even use them at my wedding because they weren't delivered in time, so they're just sitting in a box, still in their package. And now her husband is commenting insults on my Instagram, like legit, this is all so crazy, and I'm sitting here like... The situation is summarized really well by Doobie Bag on Twitter. So basically, Acacia ordered these coats for her wedding in exchange for an Instagram promo. Unfortunately, the coats got there after the wedding, so Acacia decided that the most reasonable thing to do was absolutely nothing. 
She didn't even contact the company to resolve the issue. The code company allegedly tried to contact her numerous times about their deal, but they never heard from her. That's when they decided to take legal action. Acacia acts surprised that a business plans on suing her after they sent her thousands of dollars worth of their product and she didn't fulfill her end of the deal with them and had no type of communication with them. In conclusion, she blatantly tried to scam a small company out of thousands of dollars, taking advantage of her status and large following on social media. I am unsure how this issue was resolved as nothing else was made public by neither of them. An opinion Twitter user offered more insight into the situation. She allegedly spoke to the owners of the company during the time this was going on and they said Acacia couldn't send them back because they were customized and she refused to pay because they came too late. Because the company is from the UK, this was a failure on Acacia's part because she didn't order them on time. Acacia wasn't taking any responsibility for what she did and deflecting any criticism, even though she was directly called out by the owner and admitted they threatened legal action. Once again, she had no intention of acknowledging anything or making the situation right until it was made public and she had no choice but to address it. Even when she did, she still painted herself as a victim and never took accountability for what she did. In July of 2019, Acacia announced that the Curseys are coming out with the children's book titled The Magic Shirt of Every Color. The book was written by Jairus and illustrated by an artist named Hannah Taylor. It had eight pages, a total of about a hundred words, which is pretty normal for board books of this kind. Came with a special sleeve and an enamel pin. These books were also signed by Acacia as The Curseys. All of this for a total of 45 US dollars. This book was considered limited edition and the Curseys hired an artist to illustrate the book and maybe the price was so high at first because they had to make sure she's paid and they are too. Acacia said that the book's prices will go down once the special edition books are gone but many people still purchased it. The website that these books were sold on was called CurseyFamilyBooks.com which also sold gift cards conveniently priced $5 above the price of the book and will leave whoever gets them with extra $5 to spend on nothing. They would have to collect 9 of these $5 gift cards to be able to make another purchase of the only other available item, the book. The website having a custom domain name is another interesting detail in this pattern of behavior. In case you don't know, creating a custom domain name can be easy when signing up to a host website and paying a monthly subscription. Something most small artists and creators can't afford to do when they're starting out. Of course, Acacia is privileged enough to just pay for it up front, but she goes to the extreme with every new hobby, going to the extent of creating websites with custom domain names to sell clothes and books on, creating pins, getting an illustrator, all for it to fall apart as soon as she makes the amount of money she needed for her next venture. If she stuck to selling these books and marked down the price, she could have had a consistent income from the books. But self-publishing and running a small business is a lot of hard work and isn't always instantly rewarding, which is what she was seeking. Speaking of reward, this artist also definitely didn't get compensated appropriately because despite her father being a photographer, which is a type of art, and her commissioning artists in the past, Acacia admitted she didn't know that tipping is a custom in a tweet where she said, As someone who commissions artists often, I feel really silly not knowing tipping was a thing for this line of work. Just like with Depop, many people were disappointed with the high price of the cardboard book and one of her followers quote tweeted Acacia about it and said, if you truly have an extra $45 lying around and you're thinking about ordering this book so this YouTuber can get a boob job, please reconsider and donate to one of the many organizations that work to eradicate child sex trafficking, hashtag I am Jane Doe, and linked a website. Acacia tastefully and graciously replied, hope you feel better yellow heart to someone promoting the eradication of child sex trafficking. Acacia's personality is so nasty that not only can she not let go of criticism, but she has to act high and mighty and pretend that someone pointing out that instead of wasting money on an obvious cash grab by an influencer, people can donate to a cause, need to get better? With a father like hers, I wouldn't be surprised if she's desensitized to this type of topics and her disgusting attitudes towards others is a clear reflection of his mentality too, seeing as he's a photographer and has no respect for his paying customers when they criticize him for his behavior. 
The comment mentions a breast augmentation, and that's because shortly after announcing the release of the book, Acacia announced she's getting one. I don't see any issue with getting plastic surgery for whatever reason a person may have for doing it, even if that reason is a cover-up story for an insecurity, like saying you have an indebted ribcage. But it's ironic that Acacia chose to spend this money on herself instead of investing it into care for her disabled daughter, who was a baby at the time, and was clearly struggling with her health to the point of going into heart failure. Of course, Acacia can still spend money on herself too, but she later on uses her kids' medical bills and financial situation to gain sympathy from her fans and people she scammed, like when she was trying to guilt trip Ash after stealing her products and selling it on her own. Colty Queen covered Acacia's manipulative conversations with Ash, and I made a video about this situation as well, but I will talk more about it in part 2. This also shows how much Acacia cares about herself and how little she cares about others, because after her surgery, Acacia was using a wheelchair to get around and even went to a fair for a photo shoot. But when her daughter went into heart failure and had to be rushed into open heart surgery, instead of giving her time to rest and heal afterwards, the Kirstys went on a camping trip right after she was released. Not to mention, after the breast augmentation, Acacia tweeted that the depression lifted off her shoulders and made a mental health tips video, giving tips like just calming down during an anxiety attack. Calm down, especially when you're having an anxiety attack. Just calm down, do your daily steps, breathe. The books were of course never restocked and the $20 version of them was never available. This website's domain expired and it doesn't exist anymore. The fake hype Acacia created around the book caused many of her fans to purchase the limited edition books. And once the money was received, Acacia did the bare minimum to fulfill orders and actually run her business, which of course didn't last. The next venture was Twitch streaming, where Acacia used her new image to her advantage fully. She promised to stream regularly, but just like with her YouTube, she only stuck to a schedule for a short amount of time, at least for as long as she thought she can become a Twitch partner and make money off of it, and created boring content that wasn't worth watching. But some of the things that were seen during her stream were questionable at best. One of the most memorable moments was when Acacia's giant dog stepped on her disabled infant who was left on the ground, and Acacia ignored her screams for quite a while before getting up to help. I hear Rosie crying. This wants you to back up really bad. Oh, I have to go help Rosie. I hear oh, her crying. Fine. Um, BRB guys. Hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> Everything good? Yeah. Lucy stepped on her. Oh no. These streams were extremely messy and embarrassing and exposed a lot of Acacia's personal life. She ended up quitting and removing her streams, but there are still some clips that are available online. Wow, look at this. Look at this gay ass Warwick. Wow. Whoa, whoa. Jeez. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's pretty sweet actually. Like he's <laughs> like he's literally gay is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. All right, she's she's got, she's got a rainbow. It's, it's yeah. pride. No, she's like probably just say, like I, I don't pride. I don't mean like gay as in like stupid. Like I literally mean like gay. It's a pr it's a pride war. Oh. Hotel rule, we're gonna ride till we can't no more. We've got the horses in the back. Horse talk is attached. Hat is mad black, got the boots that black to match. Riding on a horse, you can whip your Porsche. I've been in the valley, you ain't been up off that porch now. Ain't nobody tell me nothing. The ash looks like it's all white, like snow. X 
CMA subscribed at tier one. Thank you so much for your subscription, CMA. Is it quiet? Oh, it's because my mic's over here. This should be better. Sorry, guys. What are you planning for Rosie's first birthday? Oh, we don't know. Probably something small, just because last year, like, but with Brinley's, it was kind of like, Brinley was really advanced for our time even, and it was still kind of like, kind of pointless. Because <laughs> like, we don't really like people bringing presents anymore, which we did for Brinley's first birthday. She got presents and it was just kind of like, oh yay, a bunch of stuff that she's not going to use. And like we have to donate or get rid of. Um, but with Rosie, she's like, she doesn't even walk yet, which Brindley was walking and like swimming and stuff. So with Rosie, it's even like more different because like it's even more pointless almost because it's like, it's basically just for the parents. That's what the, her Brindley's first birthday was. So for Rosie, we'll probably like get a little cake, sing happy birthday. That's about it. We were trying to think of what toys to get her because she just got her big like new toys so we probably might not even get her a toy. Brinley says she wants to get her a toy so we'll see what she gets her. We probably won't do bigger birthday parties and like more planned out birthday parties until they're older because like even I mean Brinley's second birthday was planned for sure but it wasn't that big. Like, all it was was, like, some decorations from Hobby Lobby and, like, a balloon garland and a cake. Rosie deserves a birthday like Bryn. Rosie deserves what would make her the happiest. This brings us to the end of part one. Part two will have all the recent scam scandals Acacia had following her quitting Twitch and up until what she's currently doing. Let me know what you think and thank you for watching. I'll see you in part two.